The following is a form of announcement. Um, please, good evening. This is a zoning board meeting, March 21st, 2024. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Board of Adjustment of the Township of Franklin has been provided. Board members, applicant professionals, members of the public, please speak directly in the microphones so that our recording secretary can properly process minutes. Applicants and professionals, please fill out the sheet on the table when you've completed your testimony. Thank you. And please call the roll. Cheryl Bethia? Here. Richard Prokanik? Here. Joel Reese and Michael Darty asked to be excused, just so you know, Chairman. Uh, Alan Rich? Here. Gary Rosenthal? Here. Robert Shepard? Here. Basim Verdas? Here. Faraz Khan? Kunal Lakia? Here. Robert Thomas? Here. Uh, moving on to hearings, Somerset Properties, ZBA 23-00016, D variance, preliminary final site plan with variance C variances, minor subdivision in which the applicant proposes to subdivide the property into two lots and construct the 61,000 plus square foot warehouse, including seven loading stalls at 415 Weston Canal Road and 91 Cottontail Lane, Somerset, Block 517.02, Lot 8.13 in the B1 zone. Uh, this is carried to April 18th, and notification is required to anyone who, uh, for anyone who got it before or should have gotten it and didn't get it. Um, again, April 18th. The application we will hear to this evening, ECG New Jersey Incorporated, ZBA 230014. D1 use variance, the applicant seeks to operate a 1,600 square foot place of worship in one of the tenant spaces at 1165 Route 27 Somerset, Block 88.01, Lot 43 in the GB zone. This was carried from March 7th. No further notification was needed, and do we have everyone here to proceed? Hi. Uh, should I use the mic? Please. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Zoe Ferguson. I represent uh, the applicant ECG New Jersey from the firm Lieberman, Blecker, and Sinkovich. Here tonight, I have uh, Mr. Sylvester Elliott representing ECG New Jersey. I also have our architect, Mike Tormey, and our professional planner, Gordon Gemma. To be brief, uh, this is a use variance application for conditional use for a house of worship at uh, 1165 Route 27 in Veronica Plaza. This is a conditional use because this is a permitted uh, permitted conditional use in the zone, we are seeking two variances from the parking requirements under Ordinance 112-37. That's first for the number of parking spots and second for the location of the parking. This is a, uh, a pretty minor variance. There's a large number of parking spots at the shopping center where this unit is located. However, there are not a large number of parking spots behind the unit where my client's property is located. And for that reason, we're asking for conditional use variance. Uh, we're going to present testimony about the fact that there will be no external changes to the building, aside from the fact that we'll be replacing the sign in front of the unit within the existing sign block, which is permitted. And we're also going to present testimony from my client about the operations of the church. It will be operating on Sunday, mostly. And then we will also have testimony from Mr. Gemma regarding the compliance with the master plan and the ordinances. So the first witness that I'm going to call is Mr. Mike Tormey. I also believe that he is going to show um, one or two exhibits on the video. So he has his own computer here. Uh, it should work, yeah. Okay. Go to both of these monitors. 
Well, it looks like you got that one over there. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, uh, Mr. Torme, is to have you sworn in. Okay. <laughs> I'd prefer to stand this way, I could, you know, I might, I might sit, too. thank you. Yeah. Mr. Torme, we raise your right hand, please. Testimony, you're about to give truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, yes it is. State your full name, spell your last name for the record, give the board your qualifications, and by whom you are employed. Michael J. Tormey, T-O-R-M-E-Y. Michael J. Tormey. That, that's you got to keep your mouth very close, like you're a rock star. Okay. Okay. Uh, last name is spelled T-O-R-M-E-Y. Address is 238 Clark Street, Westfield, New Jersey. I'm self-employed. I'm an architect. I've been a licensed architect for 34 years in the states of New York and New Jersey. Uh, my licenses have been active and in good standing every year uh, since 1989. We, we can accept his stated qualifications as an expert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good evening. Um, so the subject space of this application, it's an existing space that's at the, uh, located in Veronica Plaza, which is on the uh, Route 27 in Veronica Avenue. And the particular space is, is the right end unit um, of this uh, shopping center. So there's, it's in the back building, and this is the subject space in this location over here. It's an existing one-story building. It uh, has a, a glass storefront at the front, a solid right side wall on the right side there. is going okay it's a little hard to see. I don't know what's going on with the, with the laser there but so I'll just walk you through it so there's a there's a front door and then there's a, a rear exit door so the space has two exits at the front one at the front one at the rear uh, the space is approximately 18 feet wide and, and round numbers the space is 1600 square feet the building is approximately 80 feet long there's really no construction that's involved with this application uh, internally other than adding one or two emergency lights that are shown along the, the right side wall there uh, in the middle of the space. Uh, the floor plan shows the existing ADA toilets at the back, There's two ADA restrooms at the back of the space. Uh, there's a storage space at the top of the plan there uh, that's all like ancillary space and, and uh, service space there. The seating is movable chairs. They are highlighted in yellow in the middle and bottom of the uh, floor plan there. There's basically two groups, uh, and that was to allow ample seating and also have two uh, access aisles that uh, would let you, you know, uh, come into the front door and go into the seating and actually and have exiting at the back of the space as well. Um, at the top of the seating, there's a, a pulpit. There would be, uh, there's an existing stage that's there now, and um, there were no walls that are being proposed to be constructed. There's the exterior, there's no changes that are taking place other than uh, the sign itself, the exterior sign of the front of the building. and the sign would actually utilize the existing sign box that's mounted on the wall now from the uh, the facade of the building uh, from the previous tenant. Uh, so the building is sprinklered. You have two exits. It's it's one story. There's no basement. There's no cellar. There's no crawl space underneath. And it's at the end unit of the the back building, which gets very little traffic in general. Uh, there are some photographs on the left side of the, of the floor pl of the plan there that shows the parking, uh, ample parking, and these were t actually taken on Sunday mornings. Uh, and this is indicative of a typical uh, condition in the parking lot on, on Sundays. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, th this uh, space 
the space is not owned by the applicant. The applicant's leasing this space, right? That's my understanding. Okay. That's correct. Kelly, they're going to agree with that? Good. Yes. Um, and so I wanted to just clarify, Mr. Tormey, um, there's not going to be any external construction done to the site or to the unit. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if the board has any questions, I certainly would love to hear them. Thank but you. there will be internal construction, will there not? No, actually, there's there's no internal construction proposed uh, other than two emergency lights that um, you know, the laser seems to go off at the at the screen there. But there's two emergency lights that are proposed for code compliance, building code compliance, that will be added in the middle of the space so that in the event of a, a power outage, those two additional lights will illuminate the space. For me, you're the drafter of this document, are you not? Yes. We take a look at these toward the... Sorry, we could take a look at the bottom right corner. That not say future walls? That is, uh, that's something that the applicant is contemplating. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's not proposed to be done at this time, but it's a p potential uh, cry room that they were contemplating. Council, are we going to have testimony on the use or non-use of it? Yes, uh, my, my client will provide testimony on that. Um, one other question, Mr. Tormey. Uh, on your analysis for the parking, it says at the bottom, there is ample parking available. Primary occupancy hours are on Sunday mornings when most, uh, most other tenants are closed. Have you had a chance to read Ms. Ferguson's letter to the board? Not recently. But... Uh, Mr. Bernstein, if you're asking about the timing, of the of the services, I'll have my my client give testimony as to that. Thank you. And what is the capacity of, of this space? The capacity of the space is uh, there's a breakdown egress. I think in round numbers, it's like 45, 48 people that uh, the code allows to be in that space or actually that, that is the anticipated uh, occupancy according to the code for different areas of the building. I believe the occupancy maximum is 49. Is that correct? Th that is correct. Yeah. 49 is the maximum? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, just as a oh, observation, the, the building code actually allows, with when you have two exit doors, more people. But this is for this uh, use in this space. This is the uh, amount of people that are anticipated under, as a maximum, but not as an average. I, I'd like to just take it just a second to ask our uh, zoning officer a question. Um, I've never really listened to a um, uh, a house of worship application that didn't involve a fence or or shrubbery around around the building. That was one of the things when I looked at this. I said, "How are they going to comply with that?" But it doesn't look from anything that I'm looking at like that's a requirement. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question, and that's actually um, some of the <laughs> that's actually some of the conversations that I had with the applicant along the way. Um, first of all, the, the vast majority of the applications that you get for places of worship are in residential zones, um, and the app and the requirement for for um, screening. You know, you, you remember that it's either a 15 or 20 foot wide buffer with six to eight foot high trees and a fence. All that applies when the place of worship is is abutting or residential properties. This and this is, is a, not. No, and this is in a commercial zone, and it joins other properties in a commercial zone. I believe the rear is a, a the BI zone. Already, then. It's not required. Thank you. Yeah. 
Any other board questions? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Tormey. Okay, you're welcome. The next witness I'm going to call is uh, Sylvester Elliott, who's going to speak on behalf of the applicant. Council, if you want him to sit at the table, you. Yes, I, I just wanted to, uh, you know what, maybe we'll, maybe we'll switch places because I'm trying to get this mic to work. <laughs> it's red. So just to clarify my previous statement, I, I said I think the rear is a, is a BI zone. I can confirm that the rear the, behind this building is a BI zone and the property to the right is also in the GB. So. Oh, sure. Would you like to take the mic from there and you can come sit? Oh. You don't have to stand up there. Okay, so Mr. Elliott, the first thing we're going to do is uh, swear you in. Mr. Elliott, would you raise your right hand, please? The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got. Yes, I do. State your full name, spell your last name for the record, and your address and your relationship with the applicant. My last name is Elliot, E L L I O double T. First name, sir? Sylvester. And where do you reside? I live at. In Somerset, uh, 242 Armstead Garden. And your relationship with the applicant is? Uh, she's representing me. What's your, what's your position with ECG? Oh, New ECG. Jersey? I'm the lead, lead pastor for Thank ECG. You, Thank you, Mr. Elliott. So the proposed House of Worship, can you tell me how many people you expect to be at the church at an average service? Um, mostly we get average of 27, but maximum 35. Maximum 35 is what yes. you expect? Yes. And you're going to have a service. Um, can you explain the, the, the day of the week and the timing? We'll be meeting on Sundays. Um, 12 to 3, and um, we are also planning to do Bible studies on Wednesdays, but probably a year from now, because we do that on Zoom presently. Okay, so you're planning to also have a Bible study. Um, is it going to be during the day or in the evening on Wednesday? In the evening hours, 7 to 8. And how many people do you expect at that Bible study? Um... Most, uh, probably by around 10 people, because most of the members, they live far away. Okay. Yeah. You previously rented space on Route 27. Is that uh, with the same, the same church? Yes. Okay. The same. And you mentioned that you're going to have services that are also live streamed on Zoom? Yes. Okay. Um, in terms of the uh, cry room that was mentioned concerning the, the walls that are proposed for that potential babysitting room, can you explain what that room would be used for? It's also part of our future planning. If we have an, um, young kids coming in, then we plan to design a small room there for little kids. Okay. And so that would be for how many children in that room? Most I would say is probably six. Okay. And would those be um, plans that, that would require any external construction or only internal? Internal. Okay. Can you tell me about um, how people are coming to the services? Do they come by car? Do they come by train? 
Yes, um, some come by car, some come by train, and um, most of them actually carpool because they come as family, so they carpool. So. Okay, so you're so you're saving saving energy. Yes, saving yes. Gas. So most time, uh, maybe probably like six cars, I'll say. Okay. Um, and so the only times that you'll be using the property would be on Sundays and then uh, on Wednesday for Bible study? Yes, exactly. Are you planning to, to uh, sublease to any other no. entity? No. No. It would just be you? Just us, yes. No food at all, right? No food. No all. food? Um, I don't see me. I don't... <laughs> Except you wouldn't be you wouldn't be selling or no 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 no, no 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 okay maybe on my bad day we'll cut cake <laughs> <laughs> no no cooking there at all no 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 nothing like that how do the people that come by train get actually to the site um like we have family coming from Jersey City area, so we normally pick them up down to um, New Brunswick train station. So somebody? Yes, we'll go down and pick so them basically up. Basically, everybody comes by car, one way or the other. Oh, you see, you say how many people? Not how many. Oh. If, if they come by train, they got to get from the train station to your spot. Yes. Um, but well, some of them, they will use Uber, and some will pick them up. Yes. Okay, so they're basically one way or another coming by, by, car. by a car. The other thing I, uh, that struck me is when I read the paperwork, in terms of your operation and your activities, I thought the Bible study and everything like that extra was going to be online or on Zoom. But is that a change? Um, we're still on Zoom. That's why I said maybe a year down the road we might change in person. Well, we have to firm up some of these things because we're, we're, we're giving you an approval now, and we're not expecting to – nobody's going to come out and inspect it every day to see when you're starting another – there has to be limits to the what you're adding – Yes, that's why the use, or we we need to be aware of what you're expecting to do and when. Uh, that's why we brought that up now. That in the near future we're going to be doing Wednesday Bible studies on Wednesdays in the evening, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. How, how would that conflict with the rest of of the center Sunday? You know, your application states it works because everybody's basically. Close. What about on Wednesday? On Wednesday, the time we're meeting, most businesses um, close down. The dollar up, they close by six. Um, the laundry close, the bread store close, the Paramount staffing close, the pharmacy close. So most of them close that by six o'clock. Okay, I do have a little reservation about the. I mean, yes, it works that way now, but what about in the future if some of those other uh, uses in the center change in turn, maybe they get a new tenant, a couple new tenants, and, and I'm a little leery about adding activities. You know, I think we really need to know what's going to go on and when you know, in order to put together a okay, resolution uh, that will work, it's 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 too it's it, it seems to be a little bit too open ended. I mean, a year from now, you add another Bible study, let's say. We don't know what that effect is going to be yet. Uh, if if I could, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I certainly understand we we want to firm things up and not have. A, a very you can't have a very ambiguous resolution, right? Um, the in in the time since we submitted the application, it has developed that Bible study would be not only conducted by Zoom but also in person. 
but we don't anticipate that any further activities would be would be added. And of course, if it's, there's going to be a condition in the resolution as to what activities can take place, we certainly would would come back if there was any other activities proposed. There wouldn't be, um, you know, any any uh, asking for activities that are not permitted. Then you would accept a condition that if there's any additional uses other than the Sunday afternoon and the Wednesday that you would agree to come back to the board. Yes. Now, the one other thing, too, that I was uh, just just to clarify for the record, you also want to eventually uh, construct a, a cry room or a baby for a baby for kids. You don't need that now. No. All right, then that would seem to me that there's going to be additional members. So are we planning for 35 or the capacity 48 or whatever? Because I'm also thinking that there, there would also, there also probably needs to be a limit to the number of people that can be there. Um. It's not about the numbers. Um, the reason why we put a hold on it, most of the kids, they're now adults. They're grown up. They would have any little kids right now. So, But somebody might have a baby. <coughs> well, I understand that. <laughs> don't do it, so. But you don't need it now. No, yes. Those, but the fact that you might need it later means there's going to be somebody additional coming. Of and course, yeah. The growth, is, the, the growth of this can be an issue because it's not a big space. Yeah. Is this viewed as a permanent home or is this a or are you looking at this as somewhat of a temporary uh, facility to you see where things are going and then you're looking for a bigger place? Exactly. Correct. If I if I may Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry we... to Take over. I didn't. Oh no, no, no! I just, I just wanted to help clarify if I can. Um, the, I think the anticipated membership at a Sunday gathering right now would be about 30 to 35 people. We are planning to provide 48 seats. The capacity is 49. Um, I certainly uh, don't anticipate, and <laughs> Mr. Elliott can give more testimony, but don't anticipate that there would be uh, growth beyond that. And we certainly want to respect the limits of the space. Okay, I, I would say in the uh, information I read, you were planning on 48 seats, folding chairs. Yes. So I would then also say that when the, ch when the children's room or the cry room is, in, is put into effect, that it's the same 48 people, but there might be less than 48 folding chairs put out because it's a space that's allowed, what, 49 people? Yes, that's correct. the limit should be 49 yes. members, and then something has to be changed. Right, so if, so if there were, say, 48 people that were sitting in folding chairs, but then there was then a, a child care situation, um, Mr. Elliott, we would, we would change it so that there's fewer people that are sitting and, and maintaining that limit of 48, right, not going over it? Yes. Um, we're really going to try our best to maintain um, the numbers of people going there. As a matter of fact, um, we're having a plan to open cells in other areas so that we can limit the people coming here. They can worship in their own township. So we're working on all that plans. I guess a simple way I should have put it is that uh, the limit should be the 49, in, including the cry room yes. and the seats and everything. Um, uh, God, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could ask just one question. I believe you testified this before. How many people during the weekday uh, prayer? Um, the Bible study, probably Bible study. six, seven, because um, it's going to be on Zoom. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. I, I just wanted to get to order of magnitude. The, the reason I asked the question was, you know, if the board was inclined to in, to impose some number on during the week, personally, I'm not sure if it matters if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. 
Um, so they may want to just, you know, on the weekend, maybe it's X, and on during the you know, weekday evening, it's Y. I don't think you need to restrict it just to Wednesday. Oh, and one more thing, just, and I'm sure maybe their planner will get will speak to this, but just so the board understands, the, the way our ordinance works for calculating the required parking, since these are not permanent seats, it's based on the, on the square footage. Um, and the parking requirement is actually, you know, per our ordinance, is quite high. It's one space for every 15 square feet. Um, so for the um, place of worship, ordinarily, ordinarily if, it's, if it's set seats, it would be, you know, in this case, 49 divided by 3. That would be like 15, 16, 16 and a half. Uh, but here, since it's based on square footage, the requirement's 23.3. Um, so the reason I bring that up is I think that there's some wiggle room, if you will. You know, if they limit it to, if you, let's say you limit it to 49 people, and they have 23 spaces to serve 49 people, which is more usually, again, it's w one car for every three parishioners. So I just wanted to, again, board to know, since the parking was technically calculated on the square footage, there is some, again, some wiggle room in that. Um, I do have a follow-up question uh, regarding occupancy. So you said three for the future uh, kids' room or cry room, but what is that? Would that be kids, or could that include someone attending to the kids? Or so then that the total would be three. I'm just saying, based on the plan, to saying three, and I'm just wondering, is that solely the kids or kids and? That would include the caretaker. Yes, the caretaker as well. Okay, what about functions during the year? Uh, what about uh, parties, weddings, anything like that? What, do you, what are your plans for that? No, that's, this location is only going to be for worship service. Because you have other locations in other yes. areas of New Jersey, right? Um, we're working on um, other locations, but we do have other locations in New York. In New York. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, if, the, if the board has any other questions, we're happy to answer. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have Mr. Gemma come testify. Thank you very much, Mr. Elliott. Good evening, Mr. Gemma. The first order of business, as I'm sure you're aware, is to be sworn in here. Gemma, testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? It is. And for the record, Gordon Gemma, G-E-M-M-A, 68 Seneca Place, Ocean Port, New Jersey. And Mr. Gemma, you're a professional planner? A professional planner. I've been since 1987, and in that context, I've appeared in front of hundreds of boards accepted by the courts of the state of New Jersey. I teach professional planning at Rutgers University, not Rutgers, Monmouth University, Kislak School of Planning, and I've also testified in front of the New Jersey Assembly and Senate on planning that's issues. That's fine. We don't need to. Uh, that's good enough. Yeah. Would Mr. Gemma be accepted as an expert by this board? Thank you very much. So, uh, Mr. Gemma, yeah. you have reviewed the application. Um, and I wanted to ask you, first, have you uh, reviewed, you know, all the, all the materials with the yes. application? Yes. Did you, have you reviewed the borough's ordinances, master plan, and reexamination reports? Yes. Okay. And are you familiar with the site? Yes. And you've heard the testimony of the applicant about the intended use of the property, what he's going to be doing there? Yes. Okay. Um, so can you give us some context just for the record about what zone the property is in and what variances are required? Sure. It's a GB general business zone. As I indicated before, there are two variances. The first variance is... You need to keep that microphone right there. Much better. Right there. Okay. You got it, Mr. Shepard. So two variances. The first variance is for the number of parking spaces. And as your planner indicated, there's a variance for the number of parking spaces because they're not fixed. If it were fixed and based on square footage, I'm sorry, and based on the number of seats, it actually only needs 16.66 parking spaces, not 23. So the fact that it's not fixed triggers that. The long and the short of it is they're deficient by 2.4 spaces. And something else you should keep in, keep in mind. Your ordinance, section 
112-98 recognizes that houses of worship have complementary uses. And in fact, it says you can cut the obligation in half. So you've already understood that there are some uses in some centers, like houses of worship versus retail spaces, that you don't need that much parking. In fact, you can have complementary uses, and that's a good thing, because otherwise what will happen, you'd have too much impervious coverage, and towns have begun to recognize you don't need spaces to sit there unused, just impervious, for no reason. The second thing is the um, location of the parking spaces. It exists in front of the building. Your ordinance says only 10% can exist in front of a house of worship. The rest have to be in the rear. So those are the two variances. Because they're variances from the conditions of a conditional use, you need a D3 conditional use variance. OK. And so uh, can you discuss a little bit what the, what the standard is there for the D3 variance? Sure. It's a relaxed standard. In fact, the court in uh, TSI East Brunswick LLC for Zoning Board of East Brunswick held that the relaxed standard established in Coventry Square applies to both the positive and the negative criteria. Cutting to the chase, what does that mean? It means that can the site reasonably accommodate the, vari the deviations from the requirement? In this case, can the site reasonably accommodate being 2.4 short in the number of parking spaces, and can the site reasonably accommodate the fact you have parking in the front instead of in the rear? That's the standard. OK, thank you very much. Um, and so as we get to uh, the standard, I think the, the first thing we want to talk about is the master plan um, and, and how how does that relate to the application here? Sure. I looked at the master plan going back to 2006, all the way up to the reexamination reports to 2022. It doesn't say a lot. But what it does say is this. The GB zone is a zone for the traveling public. What does that mean? It means that it's not just a zone for uses for people in Franklin Township, but for people coming by Franklin Township or traveling. It makes sense here on Route uh, 27. So that it sort of indicates the, the uses there of people not just here, but traveling back and forth. OK. And uh, you prepared any, did you prepare any exhibits for the board here? I prepared a simple one. Let me just give this to the board. And it is not a photo of the site. And you ask, why do I hand you out a photo of not the site? If you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you. It is a photo of a standard church in Franklin Township in a residential zone that you, the ordinance is sort of geared for. In a regular zone, uh, where you have a church, you have a church surrounded Mr. by- Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I hate to interrupt you while you're on a roll. I hate when I'm ahead. I can tell, uh, but the board, I think, would like to see what, what you're talking sure. about before you- OK. Sure, and I, we can mark that, uh, Mr. Bernstein, as either A1 or A2. Uh, Chairman, board, mark this as A1. OK. Thank you. And uh, just for edification purposes, Mr. Gemma, while it's being passed down to the rest of the board, where is this picture from? Who took the picture? And what does it represent? In it terms is of, of the Somerset Presbyterian Church on JFK Boulevard, courtesy of our friends at Google. And I, in fact, downloaded it from Google and printed it out. The reason I did it was simply to show what your ordinance is intending to truly try to do. It's really trying to look at a church in a residential area. This is not a church in a residential area. This is a storefront church where the parking's in the front, where most of the parking's in the front. So when your ordinance was drafted, it, this is what the type of church I had in mind. It's not this type of church here. And that's the only intent, that's the only reason I, I provided this, is simply to give you an idea of what your ordinance was trying to get at, and this is not what your ordinance was trying to get at. And so if, if that's not what the ordinance is trying to get at, is it your opinion that that affects the relevance of the parking requirements? Sure. And let's go to the, the issues here, the two variances. 2.4 is your, is, your, um, is your deficiency. The applicant agreed to do something important. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you said, look, how do you keep them from growing? which is an important thing, because otherwise you do get a problem. And so they agreed to condition the use. They conditioned the application upon certain numbers, upon, uh, I think, for maybe not the times of the day, but certain numbers for both the Bible service and to the number of people in there. That's how you can make sure that you're really not going to have much of an adverse impact for your 2.4 space deficiency. Um, and so given the fact that most of the time other uses are not being taken place, 
uh, particularly uh, on this end of the mall. You see they've got like a professional services there. Uh, you got a lot of other things that just aren't open that early in the morning. So we really don't have an adverse impact. I, I can't opine using the relaxed standard of Coventry Square that this has a substantial detrimental impact upon the surrounding uses or has a, a substantial detrimental impact upon the intent and purpose of your zone plan. It doesn't. 2.4 is not going to make that up. And particularly if you realize if they simply fixed the seats, they wouldn't be deficient at all, even if they had the same 49 seats. So that tends to indicate, in fact, it's not going to have that much of an impact. Second thing is parking's in the front. Well, all the parking's in the front. It's a strip mall. So it's consistent with the remaining, the remaining uses. Um, so an, unlike a house of worship in a residential area where you don't want the parking in the front, you want it in the rear, in the strip mall, that's the only place we can have the parking. So I can't opine that that has a detrimental impact upon the intent and purpose of the zone plan or upon the adjacent uses because it's the same. Those are the two variances. I think, in my opinion, the applicant easily meets the st test set forth in Coventry Square and in TSI. Thank you very much. Uh, I would invite any questions that the board may have for Mr. Gemma. Anything from the board? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gemma. Any other witnesses? That concludes my witnesses for tonight. Thank you. And then we'll f formally open to the public so anyone have wandered in like to make a comment or ask a question do that seeing none will close any other board comments or questions I I guess that when I, I looked at this application um, the 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 thing that struck me was that we'll be if we give them the variance they're looking for uh, this particular space will in this uh, commercial uh, property, uh, we'll have a uh, uh, a continuing uh, variance to rely upon going forward forever uh, after the current applicant uh, leaves. Uh, I thought a a license might be a more appropriate um, solution, but uh, that's not what they're here for. So. Um, uh, I think that in view of the um, the uh, rather de minimis um, variances that I'm going to vote in favor of uh, any resolution. Any other comments? Anything you want to add or tell us? Um, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we've I think we've uh, provided what we can provide. Any other questions, I'm happy to answer, but I think that that's our testimony for tonight. Thank you. All right, if there is no other input, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, before you entertain a motion, can I make some suggestions on conditions that's within the motion yep. or with the resolution? According to the applicant's testimony and the applicant's attorney's presentation, we are talking about a Sunday service between 12 noon and 3 p.m. and a Bible study between 7 and 9 p.m. with a limit of 49 parishioners in any shape or size based on the zoning and no more than 15 individuals for Bible study and that any changes to those conditions will require a revisit by the applicant to this board, including the change of the use, i.e. another house of worship, other than the current applicant, to sort of deal with the issue of the continuing turning this into a church by fiat. One thing that just came to mind, and maybe this is for Mark, does this use require uh, the residential version, let's say, of a, of a CO, uh, so that there, are there safety regulations we should be concerned about or fire safety issues or uh, anything of that sort? 
Well, yeah, well, prior to occupancy, they'll have to obtain necessary um, permits from the construction department. Um, I mean, I believe that this would qualify as an assembly use. I mean, the architect can speak to what, what the codes would be, but, you know, whatever, prior to occupancy, there will be applicable codes that they'll have to satisfy the building department in terms of, um, you know, building electrical, the fire code, et cetera, prior to moving into this space. Um, and then uh, as far as continuing, um, uh, they would be subject to, um, I'm not sure it's a few times a year, at least annual inspection by, by the Department of Fire Prevention, just like every commercial tenant in town. So those issues are are going to be addressed. They don't need to be in a yeah prior. No, no. It's in, in fact it's not even. It's uh, honestly, you know, respectfully, it's not. I don't think it's your purview. They again prior to occupancy, there are the building codes and the fire code and all that stuff that gets reviewed prior to occupancy, and they'll be reviewed periodically by fire prevention, again, just like every tenant, to make sure that their um, exits are clear, that their their exit signs are functional, that their emergency lights are functional, all of that stuff gets reviewed, um, just like every other commercial tenant. Thanks. OK, anyone now want to entertain presenting a motion? Uh, I move that we grant uh, ECG New Jersey, Inc. Um, a, uh, a D3 uh, use variance to allow it to operate a house of worship at 1165 Route 27, uh, Block 8801, Lot 43. Uh, the uh, granting of the variance will be uh, subject to the limitations in terms of uh, there shall be no more than 49 uh, people of any age uh, in the premises uh, during the um, uh, Sunday worship service, which shall take place between uh, 1 and 3 o'clock. And 12. 12 and 3 o'clock. And that uh, there shall be no more than uh, 15 people uh, participating in a uh, Bible study on a Wednesday evening between 7, at, seven, and, nine. seven and 9. And that there shall be no uh, food preparation or um, um, uh, consumption of food uh, within the uh, premises at the time of either uh, the service or the um, uh, or the Bible study. Okay, we have a second. Uh, the Bible study is uh, could be could be during the week on on weekdays too, not just Wednesdays, correct? Just or Wednesday? We're, just Wednesday. That's it. We're not going to. He if said it, it's going it, to be Wednesday. If it changes, we'll give them what they asked the for. Okay. okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Have I seen already second? Okay, Cheryl Bethia. Yes, I think the fact that we have conditions um, assures that uh, other houses of worship uh, down the line. Uh, would have to adhere to those same conditions. Yep. So I'm, I'm a yes. Richard Prokanik? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. Vasim Verdas? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. Okay. And I'll entertain a motion for a move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried.